Today we're going to show you some variations of the Storm at Sea block. This block in its entirety looks like this, but it's actually created with three different elements. A large square on square, a small square on square, and a diamond block that has triangles added to each corner. This one was made with our 8 inch square on square. Here is a smaller baby quilt that was made with the 6 inch version of the square on square. This tote was made with a snail's trail, which is a variation that you can make with a square on square trim tool, and the cornerstones and the side diamonds were added to make it a pocket on this darling tote. This is the actual Storm at Sea block. The center is always twice the width of these sashing strips. So there is one center, in this case it uses the 8 inch square on square trim tool. And the corners are done by adding two rounds using the same tool, which makes these 4, and a, four inch finish 4.5 measured right now. And then these diamond units can be created two different ways. We have what we call the 2P1, which has this angle is the diamond part that is created by cutting on the fold, and this angle does the corners of the block. Or if you have the MT2 and 3, the perfect rectangle and the perfect triangle, you can also create these units using both of these because the angles are the exactly the uh, same angle on each tool. So now we're going to show you how to do the individual components of this block. And we're going to start with the center that is a four and a half inch square and it has B1 and B2 triangles added to it. On the ruler, it tells you here exactly what size to cut the squares to create these corners because we have you cut squares in half once on the diagonal so the out entire outside edge will be on the straight of grain. So let's get started. You take your center square and add triangles to opposite sides. Now it is up to you at this point whether you want to trim these even with the blue fabric or if you want to just let them there and lay your next triangle on top of this piece. It doesn't matter because we're going to be trimming all of these tails off anyway after we add all four sides. I sew to opposite sides, press your seams away from the center square, and then sew the other two sides. So you can see that here I trimmed them off, but that is just personal preference. Now I have added my B1 units to the center square, so I'm going to go to my square on square trim tool and look for the square that is marked block B1. I'll put that over my center square and you can see that it lines up with the seam lines of that square and it's going to trim this exactly a quarter of an inch away from each corner. I trim two sides, rotate the block, position the ruler once again, and trim the other two sides. Now I am going to repeat the process by adding two more triangles. In this case, on the ruler it tells you to add the B2 triangles, so I cut squares in half, add triangles to each side, and then I sewed them to opposite sides, and I go back to the trim tool. This time I look for the one that says block B2. Put the black square on top of all of these seam lines and if you notice it's trimming it exactly a quarter of an inch away from each point. So I had rotated around the entire block and I have a perfect 8 inch finished center square. Now I'm going to show you how to make the corner posts of this quilt. We'll do the exact same process, and here is a finished one. This is my center square right on the ruler. It tells you to cut a two and a half inch square, and these are A1 squares cut in half on the diagonal, 
So I'm going to add opposite sides and opposite sides again and use the white A1 square to square that up. Then I'm adding the A2 triangles to opposite sides just like I did the larger version and I'll take the A2 square put it on the seam lines once again and you can see when I trimmed it I'm trimming it exactly a quarter of an inch away. So both of those units are made with this. Now I'm going to show you how to make this unit, the diamond unit. A lot of the patterns have you make this with a seam down the center right here. I never like that method because by doing that I have extra bulk right here when I go to put the everything together and you end up with 12 seams coming together. So it's much easier to use the method I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to use the 2P1 and as you can see on this unit the blue is the diamond. So I'm going to take this and fold the unit exactly in half. You can press this if you want to but this works just fine for me. This is an eight and a half inch rectangle, so I'm placing the dash line, which is at four and a quarter inches on the base of that. And if you'll notice, the tip is even right there with the top. Now I'm going to rotary cut both sides to get that diamond shape. And there is the center diamond. Now if you notice on these triangles, the yellow ones, we need mirror images of each other. So I like to cut those pieces on the fold. Here is a four and a half inch strip of fabric and I have placed it right sides together just like it would come in off the bolt and now I'm going to use this part of the tool. So I am left-handed. I'm going to turn this down this way so I can take this. I've already lined it up so it's perfect and I'm going to place this here so this lines up with the top and the four inch line on this ruler which says to use a four and a half inch strip is on the base. I can continue to cut these and rotate the ruler so there's absolutely no waste of fabric every time I position this. And if you'll notice, with every cut, I'm getting one side and then the other. Now when I go to sew these on, I sew opposite sides. So I'll sew this unit on and this unit on, press those away from the center square, and then sew the opposite sides. So I end up with a perfect four inch by eight inch finish diamond to add to that pattern. When I take four of these units and place them around the center square, and four of the corner post blocks, which we created with the square on square trim tool, I now have the Storm at Sea block. When you're making this though, be careful because the blocks share a sashing strip. So when I go to do this, I don't need as many of these sashing strips as I do the center square because I'm going to be showing a sashing, the center square, a sashing, the center square. And just remember this finished one because it starts with an eight inch finished square on square block. The entire block is going to be 16 inches.